pint of blood for a pint of ice cream. The deal aimed at getting you to donate. A Morgan Hill daycare worker accused of drugging toddlers. Why the school is now being investigated as well. And our top story, the turn of events in the debate over Greenfield's police chief. Why the city manager has changed her mind. You're watching KSBW Channel 8, Salinas, Monterey, Santa Cruz. This is Action News 8. Coverage you can count on. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Green. Aaron Clark is off tonight. We are beginning this evening with an unexpected turn of events in Greenfield, just days after the city manager there went on the record saying she wants a new police chief. But after backlash from residents, the city manager, Susan Stanton, now says she's changed her mind. Action News reporter Tom Miller is live in Greenfield with more on what it means. Well, Dan, it seemed to have a big influence on the city council. Tonight, it voted 4-1 to one to extend Eric Sill's contract as police chief in both Greenfield and uh, here, or here in Greenfield and Soledad for another year. Chief Eric Sills is staying put in Greenfield. After agreeing to a one-year contract last March to lead both the Greenfield and Soledad Police Department, Sills' deal was renewed by Greenfield, which will now pay Soledad $120,000 in exchange for a year's worth of the chief's services. There's enough community interest in, in, in this that they've seen some successes between our two cities and they see some value to continuing in their range, certainly in this agreement. But this agreement doesn't come without controversy. Just last week, Greenfield City Manager Susan Stanton said she wants the city to have its own chief. But after speaking with residents in the time since, Stanton now says she's changed her mind. I still feel that the city needs a fully vested chief of police. But I also understand that maybe now might not be the time. However, not everyone at tonight's special city council meeting agrees with the vote, with some questioning the true value of the cost savings move. But is it really worth to save that extra $50,000 and not have a full-time chief? I never have I felt so super vigilant and unsafe um, living in Greenfield as a teacher as I do today. As for the chief, he sees this as a chance to lay the groundwork for further expansion, potentially placing law enforcement duties for these two cities, along with Gonzalez and King City, all under one roof. Uh, it's no secret that we've discussed it regionally uh, expanding, and if the other cities one day want to join in, that's, that's, we'd have a model in place for them to do so. And with benefits, the chief makes about $200,000 a year, but there's an extra $40,000 that's part of this contract that'll go to transportation costs, car maintenance, office space, and other lesser expenses. Dan. All right, thanks very much, Tom. Sills' contract is for a year, but it renews automatically in March of 2014 unless the city manager from either Soledad or Greenfield gives a month's notice that they want to end the merger. The Salinas City Elementary School Board was talking about solar power and energy efficiency at thir its 13 schools. Discussion went down tonight. The idea for construction of a solar power generating system that could save the district money. Over $12,000 estimated, uh, estimated to be saved in the first 16 years, increasing to over $800,000 in annual energy savings after that. Total project cost would be $7 million. Steinbeck Library will reopen tomorrow in Salinas after fire closed it down last week. It broke out Wednesday night in the back of the building near the book drop. Firefighters say it started outside the library and could be arson, but the cause remains officially under investigation. On the crime watch, a Hollister woman has been arrested, accused of drugging toddlers at a Morgan Hill daycare. Police say 59-year-old Debbie Grass admitted to putting an over-the-counter sleep aid in children's cups. Co-workers at Kitty Academy caught her doing it, they say, on Friday before the kids had a chance to drink it. The bigger question is, how long had she been doing it? She'd worked there for five years. Never picture anybody do this to any kid. Yeah, what do you think about somebody doing this? Sickening. Sick to my stomach. I want to throw up. Her motive, we don't know. She did not She did not make any mention as to why, but um, that's definitely under investigation. We're, we're looking into that. Police are investigating why Kitty Academy waited until Monday to report it. 
Kratz was immediately fired on Friday. Police are charging her now with felony child endangerment. Pleasanton police are investigating allegations meantime that a former preschool teacher tied up a two-year-old girl who wouldn't take a nap. Officers found out about it after a woman showed a photo of the toddler with her feet and hands duct tape. Parents met with school and church leaders tonight. They're planning to shut down Friday for a week of intense staff training. The teacher is no longer employed at the school. Police in Salinas arrested this woman today. She was busted on Capitol Street. 32-year-old Mary Jane Yanez told you about her last night. Police say she stabbed a woman at a birthday party over the weekend after an argument. Police are charging her with attempted murder. A moment of silence today in Santa Cruz before the city council meeting, honoring fallen officers Butch Baker and Elizabeth Butler. It was exactly two weeks ago city leaders learned that those two officers were killed during their meeting. Today, the council thanked law enforcement, firefighters, and 911 operators for all they do for the community. And what I ask in this moment is that as we go forward, we do not forget that we honor Butch and Elizabeth every day and that we say thank you to the people that serve us. So it's really, really important. Mayor Bryant also announced the city will acknowledge others for the role that they played during the active shooting incident that happened two weeks ago. A Bay Area congresswoman wants to know if the military did enough to prevent the tragic deaths of Detective Butler and Detective Baker. Jeremy Goulet had served in the military. While in the military, he was charged with rape twice. Charges were dropped in exchange for a less than honorable discharge. Now, Jackie Spear is calling for a federal probe into why the Army dropped those charges, introducing the Military Judicial Reform Act today on Capitol Hill. When we don't address these issues that exist in the military, it then bleeds into the civilian setting, and in this case, tragically, involved the deaths, the murders of, of two police officers. Had there been some sort of action taken previously, this individual might have been in custody where they belong. We do know that he had a history of sexual violence, both in and out of the military. And for whatever reason, people somehow always look the other way. Asked, the Military Reform Act would take away the power of military commanders to overturn judge and jury decisions after court martials. Well, news that could mean that you'll see more vehicles on city beaches, levees, and parks in Santa Cruz. Tonight, the city council voted 6-1 to one to allow designated vehicles to patrol those places in an effort to improve safety and keep them clean. One city council member opposed it. So I think, you know, if the council wants to make an exception to that that's significant, then we should, we should have a community hearing about it and really look into it. I mean, we're not talking about it one small one-time use. We're talking about an ongoing program where trucks are on the levees and now might be on the beaches. The change is designed to allow commercial or other vehicles to access parks, levees, and beach areas briefly for events or for work, including first alarm patrols uh, with special staff-issued permits. State of California is being sued to try and stop a fire prevention fee. Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association says the suit is challenging the constitutionality of the fee. The 800,000 people that are currently living in rural areas have gotten a bill for $150 to cover that fee. The lawsuit claims it's an unconstitutional tax. If you're thinking about donating blood, there's a deal for you in Monterey. The Blood Center of Monterey is offering donors a pint for a pint. You get a pint of ice cream, they get the blood. You get a coupon for a Baskin Robbins. And it kind of ties in with the whole St. Patrick's Day and a pint, unfortunately not beer, but ice cream that we can offer. Blood centers across uh, from the post office in Monterey. It's actually closed tomorrow, but you can take advantage of the deal Thursday from 10.30 to 6. Friday from 8.30 to 3.15, that'll be the last day it's offered. In news across America, police in Oregon stormed into a Lincoln City hotel room tonight, ending a multi-state search and a day-long standoff with a man suspected of killing his grandparents. 
26-year-old Michael Boyson was released from a Washington correctional facility last week. His grandparents picked him up. They had a welcome home party for him. They were found dead the next day. Police have not released how they died. President Obama doing something he hasn't done in a while, forcing lawmakers on to do face-to-face -face talks on Capitol Hill. Today, he continued the charm offensive, as some call it, with the first of several visits. Action News reporter Nicole Killian has more from Washington. As the president strolled through a super soaker, raining on his parade, this National Journal report quoting a White House official that his outreach is a joke. It does not represent the president's view, it does not represent the White House's view, and it does not represent the administration's view. The president made a rare appearance on Capitol Hill to meet with Senate Democrats. It follows a series of schmooze sessions with congressional Republicans last week, including a lunch with former campaign rival Paul Ryan, who unveiled the House GOP budget. Elections do have consequences. We're in the majority. The president won re-election and the Democrats are in the majority. This is our offer. This is our vision. And what you do is you actually show the country what you believe in. The blueprint balances the budget by repealing the president's health care law, revamping Medicare, and cutting domestic programs. That's even more extreme than the propaganda we've seen in the past. Senate Democrats say they'll offer a counter proposal, while the White House says the president will release his own budget in April. Too little, too late for some. I hope that's not a reflection of a lack of seriousness, uh, but it is uh, beyond, uh, beyond tardy. The president's budget was actually due last month. In the meantime, he'll hit the hill again to meet separately with House and Senate Republicans, as well as House Democrats. In Washington, Nicole Killian, KSBW, Action News 8. The Catholic uh, Archdiocese of Los Angeles is going to pay nearly $10 million to settle four cases of alleged sexual abuse. They were scheduled to go on trial next month, all involving ex-priest Michael Baker, who was removed from the ministry after telling Cardinal Roger Mahoney in 1986 that he molested two boys. Baker later was allowed to return to the ministry, where he is alleged to have abused more children. In news around the world, history from St. Peter's Square today. Thousands outside anxiously awaiting the first vote on the next pope. It came and black smoke poured from the chimney above the Sistine Chapel. The first ballot ended with no decision. In the last century, no conclave has lasted more than three days. There continues to be speculation the first North American pope could be elected during the conclave. Others say no chance. Coming up on Action News, there are hazards on the golf course, and then there's this. A sinkhole? mom uses her kids' clothing against them. Why, it's extreme tough love, humiliation style. First, though, Jim's here with our wake-up weather. All right, we're getting a little tough love along the coast in the form of fog. We'll take a look at that. High clouds tracking to the north. Rain is way up north and no prospect for it coming here anytime before the weekend. Maybe next week. We'll see what happens. Right now, though, we're doing 50s and 60s still at this hour in the Central Valley. 37 in Tahoe, 40s and 50s along the coast. Nothing terribly cold, but the relative humidities are way up here, so it feels kind of damp and chilly near the beaches. And other than that, it's pretty much clear. So we're going for 48 degrees in Coralitos right now. 66 for a high tomorrow in Monterey, but there will be some morning mist, followed hopefully by a little mild sunshine. We'll talk about all that here in just a bit. You're watching the number one news choice on the Central Coast with Dan Green, Aaron Clark, Sports with Dennis Lennon, and KSBW Weather with Jim Benderswan. Coverage you can count on. This is Action News 8 at 11. Controversy surrounding a Colorado mother who makes her children wear shirts that list their sins. And their school has refused to let the kids wear the shirts at school. Action News reporter Nelson Garcia has more. This is the front of the shirt. Jessica Rocha sent her stepdaughter to Green Acres Elementary in Fort Morgan. 
with a message. I steal. Steal means taking property belonging to someone else without permission. Eight-year-old Aurora has a problem. She would steal from Walmart, from the neighbor, from a friend's house, from my purse. This is mom's answer. Says, I steal. Please watch me. Nine-year-old Xavier has a problem, too. Xavier is a bully in school. He likes to backtalk teachers, um, do hateful things to students. She wanted to make him a shirt and send them both to school to teach them a lesson. The school said no. I just get uh, made fun of. Fort Morgan Superintendent Ron Eccles says, I respect her right to do what's best for her family, but I wish she would leave the school out of it. We cannot support something that is demeaning to the kids. And I don't think that a t-shirt is harming my child at all. Do you think it's a good idea for you to wear that shirt yeah. to school? Why is it a good idea? Because it'll help me remember things to not steal things. Rocha says, I asked you to do it a long time ago. No, you have She's tried everything, from grounding to writing apology letters to taking away privileges. She says nothing works. This is what happens at home. This is what happens at school. Rocha says after one day of wearing the stealing shirt at school, Aurora has stopped. That's why she wants Green Acres to give her the green light to send her kids to class with a message. We are trying to parent at home so they don't end up in foster care, so they don't end up in jail, so they don't end up in prison later on. I am trying to be proactive in their school life as well as their home life. Nelson Garcia reporting for us. Well, there are hazards, of course, on most golf courses, but this really is a hazard. A few golfers playing around a golf at a course in Waterloo, Illinois, outside St. Louis. Suddenly, a player was missing when they heard his calls for help, they realized what was going on. He had been swallowed by a sinkhole. This is after they dug it out, 18 feet deep. He was in there for about 20 minutes, made it out with a dislocated shoulder and some bruises. He says he actually wants to play the course again someday, but he may skip that hole. A man returning from a two-year church mission, surprised by a flash mob that was organized by his girlfriend so she could propose. Happened outside security at Will Rogers Airport. Moments after saying yes, he walked away not to be outdone. She won't be the only one getting down on one knee. I love you. Will you marry me? So, yes, is all around. They plan to get married next month in San Diego. Coming up, Jim is here with a look at the forecast. First, though, here's our Skycam 8 Salinas, top Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital with your local conditions. Now, KSPW Weather with Jim Vanderswan. It's kind of amazing. We switch over to Pacific you know, from standard time to daylight saving time. Boom, just like that, all of a sudden, it's looking a lot like summer out here. Marine layers down about 1,200 feet. Last night, it was less than 1,000 feet. We thought we'd burn it off and it hung around the coast all day. Our nighttime fog tracker says already starting to sneak down the Salinas Valley. Ceilings 200 feet or less. Visibility is about a quarter to a half mile, depending on where you are. It may go up a little bit, but we'll see. Watch for that in the morning. It'll be a little misty at a few spots. It's getting warm, though, also to show you, you know, how, what's pulling all that fog in. 81 in Fresno tomorrow, Bakersfield, 91 in Palm Springs, and around here we could get a little toasty. I'll show you that in a moment. Still cold enough for winter, though. Snow keeps going into the Great Lakes states, parts of the upper Midwest around a low pressure system. Cold front bringing rain and a little, little bit of snow in parts of New England, but that one's moving on out. The rest of the wet weather coming over the Pacific is pretty much in Washington and British Columbia. That's where that's going to stay. One more day of snow for parts of the east coast but the front itself will be moving off the map but the cold air sticks around for a while longer while the west warms up under that high pressure ridge see it here on the temperature mat uh, still 30s and 40s but then uh, by the time you get down to the gulf coast here in the 60s get a little toasty around phoenix though up to about 90 degrees low pressure systems well away from us we still have high pressure here that's going to force the storm track north for a little while longer probably till at least sometime late next week low clouds and fog or microcast says yeah it could be a little bit of it lurking around the coast there. We're getting enough relative humidity to do it.
it. It's kind of touch and go on that, but we should be able to peel it back to get sunshine going with that. Temperatures cool in the morning, but not as cold as we have been, but except around the Monterey Peninsula, still keep that ocean air with a little afternoon sea breeze. And then uh, still looks like pretty warm numbers coming into the south end of the valley. Probably the warmest days we've seen so far this year. It's not going to be huge, not like summertime, but it gets up there and at least we'll uh, record some of these big numbers. They can get in the 80s. You haven't seen, felt 80s in a while here unless you've been traveling somewhere because there haven't been a lot of them around in January and February. And here we are in March. We may just hit a record here and there. We'll see. Could be uh, pretty close to 90 degrees in King City, but like I say, it'll probably go up there for not more than about an hour or so at the most, but it'll be a warm day. But along the coast, still cool. It was 50s in a few spots today. We'll try for 60s tomorrow, maybe 70s there in Carmel uh, Valley and uh, 81 in Carmel Valley, 74 in Carmel by the sea. Could be mid 80s around Santa Cruz, Capitola tomorrow and up in the mountains, pretty warm too. Have some areas of fog, locally dense, factor that into the morning commute. Other than that's fair, and we'll go for sunny and warm tomorrow. See how that pans out. Should be a beautiful day, likely the warmest of the week. Gradually cools down. And then we'll uh, get it done about normal over the weekend with some night morning fog and low clouds and some high clouds. Still a pretty picture, no matter how you cut it, and a beach shoveling snow like they're still yeah, moving in the uh, Great Lakes up there. All right. Very good. All righty, uh, just ahead, uh, the heat stay hot, sharks stay cold, and free agents find new teams in the NFL. Here are your winning lottery numbers. News 8 Sports with Dennis Lennon. San Jose Sharks and I taking on the St. Louis Blues for the second time in four nights. Those Blues beat San Jose on Saturday night, and those Blues beat San Jose on Tuesday night. First period goal here by Chris Stewart of St. Louis. Coming up right, uh, right about here. Yeah, you're going to fire it past Ante Niemi there. Uh, he had two goals in the game. The real killer, though, came late in the second period. The Sharks had cut the lead to 2-1. to one. It was just a few seconds to go before the period's over. They allowed the Blues to get a third goal. Killer right there. Second chance. Chris Porter scores. 3-1. to one. Sharks did not recover. 4-2 to two is the final. Sharks, who started the season so well, now have just two regulation wins in their last 20 games. Sharks home against the LA Kings Thursday night. Local basketball, SoCal High played in the semifinals of North Cal playoffs tonight, and their great run comes to an end. SoCal's season is over. They're beaten by Cardinal Newman in Santa Rosa, 57-51, the final. SoCal uh, comes up one game short of playing in the Northern California Championship game. Good season nonetheless. NBA Miami Heat tonight looking for their 19th win in a row. Miami home against the Atlanta Hawks. The Heat would never trail in this game. They are wire-to-wire -wire winners over Atlanta. Extending their winning streak right here. Mario Chalmers buries a three-pointer. Dwayne Wade would lead the Heat tonight. He scored 23. It's Dwayne Wade who gets the dunk at the end of this break. So it's 19 wins in a row for Miami. They will try and make it 20 in a row tomorrow night. When they play the 76ers in Philadelphia, by the way, the Warriors had the night off. They will uh, be back at it tomorrow night at home against the Detroit Pistons. NFL's free agent signing season began today. The Niners lose a pretty good player right away. Tied in Delaney Walker. Says so long to San Francisco. Signs for the Tennessee Titans after spending the first seven years of his career with the Niners. Delaney Walker gets a four-year deal with $18 million, and uh, he'll no longer be the backup for Vernon Davis. He'll be the starting tight end with the Tennessee Titans. Very solid all-around player. It's excellent on special teams, blocks, he catches. Delaney Walker, number 46 in your highlights, will be missed in San Francisco. Titans also had a local free agent, offensive lineman and Andy Levitri. Andy Levitri gets a five-year, $35 million deal from the Titans. Andy Levitri played high school ball at San Lorenzo Valley High. Also today, the Oakland Raiders cut. They cut receiver Darius Hayward Bay and defensive back Michael Huff. Big deal of the day goes to wide receiver Mike Wallace. He leaves the Pittsburgh Steelers, signs with the Dolphins. Wallace gets a five-year, $65 million deal. He has, uh, in four years with the Steelers, 230 catches, 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns. Miami desperate, desperate for some offense, so they're going to gamble on that guy, Mike Wallace. Baseball. Hello, Manny. Manny Ramirez signs with the team. That team, though, is in Taiwan. Only offer he got. Manny says he's starting a new beginning. 
Yeah. As, other than ending an old finish, he's starting a new beginning. Last seen with the A's last year, they said, sorry, Manny. But Manny, you know what he's going to get paid? Well, 25 grand a month, which is... We used to get that in a game, didn't he? Well, yeah, but I mean, 25 grand a month in, uh, in Taiwan, I, I imagine that'd go pretty well. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Probably will. All right. All right, Monterey Bay tomorrow, a little bit of mist in the morning. We'll do northeast winds to help push it out to sea with any luck at all. But uh, northwest winds in the afternoon may bring some of it back, so we'll take a look at that. And Lee will drop by with an update on that first thing tomorrow morning. So there you go. All right. Enjoy your day by the bay. That is our report for now. Thanks for making a short choice for News at 11. We'll see you back tomorrow. Until then, have a great night. You take care.